end up. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Well done, Mr. John. Thank you, Lord Jesus. How many thank you, Lord God, Mr. John? Let's go with that. Let's try to be another one. Let's try to be as we're just in the presence of the Lord, let's just lift up our brother David Belcher. He and uh, Sharon are up in uh, Albany. David had to have some uh, operation on his leg. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but when I texted with Sharon about an hour ago, he was still in surgery. And she said his attitude was good and positive, but uh, we thank you, Lord, for a successful surgery. We ask for our anointing and skill and blessing on the surgeon any associates, any doctors, any nurses, any orderlies, anybody that would be ministering to him, for David and Sharon to be open to the power and the presence of the healing of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, I had a text from <clears throat> Brother Joe Briggs, who lives down near Pennsylvania, he comes to our prayer meeting occasionally. He works out of town a lot, um, big husky guy. Uh, he just asked for prayer because um, it's not a secret that we're talking out of school, but he does, you know, he's probably one of the strongest people I know physically, but he suffers from, uh, from anxiety attacks. And uh, so I, I just told him today that I stood with him, that uh, with him I'm dismissing anxiety from his life, that Jesus would give him the grace uh, to uh, be filled with the Holy Spirit and be filled with his peace. Mm -hmm. uh, for any of the other people that have asked us for prayer that are in need, Yes, Lord, we just we put him into the chalice of your blood. <clears throat> There's no better place that we could place people into the precious blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. All our family members, uh, all the people we work with, we pray with, we fellowship with, uh, our uh, in-laws and our outlaws, uh, every, everybody that, that uh, is in our path, all our neighbors, all of our neighbors, the good neighbors and the bad neighbors, all right? Jesus loved everybody. You know, it says, while, while we were yet sinners, he died for us. Amen. Oh, isn't that good? He wasn't waiting for me to repent. He wasn't waiting for me to clean up my act. He came down and met me in my misery, and he brought me out of my misery. And he's leading me into his joy. And it's a progression. I understand this. I've been being led by him consciously for 50 years, and I'm just getting at some of it. But that's okay. Because he promised that he would complete the good work he began in us. Right. Isn't that good? Yes. We don't have to worry about it. It's not up to us to complete it. It's up to him to complete it. Yes, we need to surrender. Yes, we need to say yes. Yes, we need to accept him. Yes, we need to invoke the Holy Spirit. Yes, we've got to understand that our eyes should be fixed on Jesus. All that stuff is true. And the more we make that our MO, the more when we wake up in the morning, we call upon the Holy Spirit to rule over that day. Well, this is our 43rd year in reading as the St. Anthony's Prayer Group. For 40 plus of those years, Chet and I ministered together. Sometimes he led the prayer meeting, sometimes I led the prayer meeting. Sometimes he was a step ahead in the Spirit, sometimes I was a step ahead in the Spirit. He was also often a step ahead of me, often. But anyway, it was so wonderful to have that kind of fellowship, and that's what we have together. You're, you're getting insights and, and, and you're getting leadings from God. And sometimes that's part of the picture that I'm missing. And I need to have that color to finish out his picture. You need my insight to finish out your color because we're here as a community. We're not in competition with one another. We're on a pilgrimage together. And our job is to be prophets. The Vatican Council documents and the Catechism of the Catholic Church says we're priests, prophets, and kings. And a prophet encourages, upbuilds, and consoles. We should be looking to do that. And you know, um, when he says, fix your eyes on Jesus, when he says, seek first the kingdom, and one of the saints says when the Lord spoke of the kingdom, he was talking about the presence of the Holy Spirit. When we ask him for the grace to do that, because, you know, you and I and our own little, I can't figure that out. We're, we're just, we just don't know how to do that. But the Holy Spirit leads us into all truth. He reminds us of everything that Jesus said. He comforts us. He can call, controls us. He leads us. He proves us wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. He's our paraclete. There's all sorts of things that paraclete does. 
when we say, Lord, I surrender to you. Lead me, guide me. And the most beautiful, one of the most beautiful things in the scripture says, if we're led by the Spirit, we won't, we certainly won't fulfill the desires of the flesh. Isn't that something? I mean, we've all got desires of the flesh, okay? And I found out about seven years ago when I read that scripture and it started to quicken in my heart, is that I don't have to choose to, to fight the flesh. So what the Lord says is, you don't have to fight the flesh, you have to be led by the Spirit. When you're led by the Spirit, then He won't allow us to gratify the desires of the flesh. Isn't that good news? Wow. You know, some people go to their last breath fighting the flesh, and they just lose every time. We're going to lose every time. Because the flesh will just raise up its head. My, one of my mentors in, in Florida, Charlie Osborne, said to me a couple of years ago when I was talking to him on the phone, he said, you know, every time my flesh gets stirred up, I go over and I crawl in the coffin because a dead man can't act in the flesh. Because in baptism, it says we've died with Christ. We don't believe that. Oh, yeah, we, something happened. What did it happen? What happened? We died. One day we're going to die. No. There's one of my uh, people I, I fellowship with told me about this book a guy wrote, and it was called Living Dead. We need to live as if we really did, and we really did, die with Christ in baptism. And the other side of that is we rose with Christ in baptism. Scripture goes as far to say is our lives are now hidden, hidden in Christ, high above every principality and power. Our lives are now hidden in Christ, high above every principality and power. That means Jesus, who ascended to heaven after he was raised from the dead, now sits, sits at the right hand of the Father with a far more excellent ministry, living forever to make intercession. And the whole court of heaven is making intercession. They're just not playing games and singing songs up there, although they, I'm sure they have fun and they sing songs. But what they're doing is they're joining in the intercession of Jesus. And so Mother Nadine would always say, ask Jesus what his prayer is. You know? Uh, you know, I, I've said this a hundred times, and I'm going to say it one more time. When uh, the example she said, when I, I saw her for the first time in 2000 and maybe one, or I think it was, up in Skinny Atlas, she gave a retreat that Father Rorta was, was put on. And she said, uh, there were these three ladies that were at, at a conference that they taught about this, asking Jesus what his prayer is. And they said, you know, we think that's a fine thing to do. And it, it happens, one of their focuses of, of their prayer was praying for the shutting down of this abortion clinic. And every, but the only thing that was happening is they was doing more and more business. So they said, well, you know, we think we're praying, right? But we, we don't have any problem asking Jesus what his prayer is. So they asked them. And they're driving in the car. And, and the, the way the story goes is the Lord spoke to each one of their hearts at the same time and said, this is how I want you to pray. Pray for the conversion of the man that owns the abortion clinic. And they said, well, Lord, we're gonna, if this is what your prayer is, that's what we're gonna pray. And what happened is a very short time later, the guy had a conversion of heart and he closed down the clinic. You see, I, I look at this in my own life. I don't know if you've ever had these things, but I'd cycle around every once in a while and there'd be a wall that I hit. And that wall just wasn't coming down. I didn't hit it every day. But sooner or later, I'd get back to that wall. And I didn't know what it was. I didn't know how to get beyond that wall. I didn't know how to take the wall down. But the Holy Spirit knows which brick needed to come out for that wall to go down. And Mother Nadine was talking one time about uh, they were great on intercession uh, for individuals, for countries, for uh, uh, people, for circumstances going on in the world. And, and one day in the late 80s, they were, dry, they were praying uh, for Germany. They happened to be in their heart for the country of Germany. And, and the Lord gave them a, a, an image. And the image was of a wall. And they said, well, what, what is that wall, Lord? Is that the Berlin Wall? And he says, that's the Berlin Wall. He says, well, what do you want from us? He says, I want you to pray that it comes down. My father wants the wall to come down. And they said, okay, Lord, the grace for the Berlin Wall to come down. And two days later, the Berlin Wall came down. Okay, now, 
She said, don't discount the years and decades of suffering that brought that point to that wall coming down and all the prayers that went into <coughs> setting those people free. But see, as intercessors, sometimes we plant the seed, sometimes we water the seed, and every once in a while, we pick the fruit, okay? It's nice to pick the fruit once in a while. But whatever he's calling in our continuum, how we pray for that, we should do the same thing. And, uh, you know, another time, uh, Mother Nadine was talking about uh, understanding who we are in Christ. And she was part of an exorcism with a, a priest who was an exorcist, a psychiatrist, and herself. It was a, for a young boy. And they were praying through the prayer of exorcism. And, uh, <coughs> and while they were on a break, she was in the room with this young boy. And the devil manifested himself and pointed his finger and says, who do you think you are? And she looked at him and she said, I know who I am. And he left because she knew who she was. She knew who she was in Christ. You see, the devil didn't scare her. She just told him the truth. I know who I am. You know, so when anxiety, fear, and uh, uh, <clears throat> worry knock at our door, um, are we going to say, oh, I don't know what to do about this. I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, i got to throw myself into a tizzy over here. Or do we say, I know who I am in Christ. He's redeemed me from the curse of the law. He's made me the head and not the tail. I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. I'm more than a conqueror in Jesus Christ. I'm a temple of the Holy Spirit. And we keep our minds fixed on the reality of who God says that we are. And then the battle is not ours, but the battle is the Lord's. So we, we step back and we praise and we worship and we enter into his glory. And the Lord simply will manifest his glory and his glory will take care of all the rest of the stuff. We don't have to put our boxing gloves up. We're supposed to fight the good fight of faith. And our battle isn't against flesh and blood, but the battle is the Lord's. The battle is the Lord's. And, and in our own lives, we have touch points about when things happen in our lives and they happen in all our lives and we're all going under different kinds of trials and temptations and stuff like that. But Brother James says, kind of pure joy, brothers, when every trial comes your way. So when the trial comes your way, are we listening to, to Thomas Merton that said, he said, if anything or anybody can hurt you, you've not yet let the Lord become your defense. So I'm sure it happens to all of us, but I know it happens to me. Somebody will say something to me that just, ooh, gets me, pokes my flesh. I can start to get irritated. And though I try and make up some kind of a, conjure up some kind of a rationale for me to be angry with that person, for me to make an excuse for my, my failings, for me to whatever it is to not submit myself to truth, or do I say, Heavenly Father, you said that your power is made perfect in weakness, and I'm just got my weakness full faced. I'm looking at it right now, and I want this to be a touch point of healing and restoration for me, not an opportunity to go deeper into the hole, but to climb up the mountain with you. Would you please come and meet me and make your power perfect in my weakness right now? Not in this alone. God's with us. He's in us. So um, I'd like to ask your prayer on the, I think it's, it's a Saturday, I think it's the 18th of November when it's the monthly men's fellowship breakfast. They've asked me to give a talk this coming month on the Holy Spirit and the Eucharist. And I, I've been praying on that and I'm, I'm working out the outline of, in the scripture outline Where is that? For, for that. Where is that? A uh, lady of good counsel. Right after the nine o'clock mass on Saturday morning, they have a men's breakfast free. Then they're going to have, you know, they have usually a presentation and they have fellowship. So I'm going to do the presentation this month. But so all I'm going to do is share what I'm understanding. Um, is and our understanding changes. God gives us more light. And one of my mentors, Charlie Osborne, said. We do the best we can according to our understanding, and when our understanding changes, our actions change. Okay? When we understand better what his will is, and we're willing to surrender to that, 
our actions will change. <clears throat> then we'll be doing the great commission that he gave us. Preach the kingdom, heal the sick, cast out demons. Uh, he told that to the, to, the, to the 12, he told it to the 72, and he told it to all those that believe in the, the end of Mark. Those are the things we should be, and it's not some kind of a super spiritual thing. It's simply, that's what he's called the church to do. And we've not, and the gifts of the Spirit are given to us so that we could uh, uh, equip the saints. We're the saints. Mother Teresa says, don't forget, we're all called to be saints. Father Pryor, today was All Saints Day, and he gave a beautiful homily at Mass this morning. You know, talking about three saints that really affected him, and there were three saints that made a decision that made that says they were all in. Saint Damien, when he went to the to Hawaii to go in that colony with the lepers, he knew once he foot, set foot on that in that in that island there, he ain't never coming back. He he made a commitment. Mother Mary Ann Cope, uh, who was from the Syracuse area. And she was sort of an administrator of St. Joseph's Hospital up there. She was the only one that responded. And she and a bunch of her sisters went and they joined them. And they knew when they put, put their foot on that island, they were never coming off that island. It was a total commitment. Uh, Kateri Kathawika, the, 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 the Native American saint, when she decided to follow Jesus and get baptized, she knew she was never going to be able to go back to her nation because that wasn't accepted there. So they made irrevocable choices to commit to the Lord. You know, and unfortunately for me and I think for a lot of us, we make that decision until something comes along shiny and bright and we go and we forget about who we were. <clears throat> we waste a lot of time. So, um, Padre Pio, let's see if I can find this here. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, up till now, we have done nothing at all, so let us begin today. It was to himself that St. Francis addressed this council. Let us humbly make it our own. Don't let us waste our time. We, are not, we ought not to put off tomorrow what we could do today. Oh, that today you would hear his voice, harden not your heart, he's quoting Psalm 95. All we have is the present moment. So let us keep a watch over it and live it as though we were a treasure entrusted to us. Time doesn't belong to us, let's not waste it. You know, there's opportunities that come into our lives, whether it's a consolation or whether it's a trial, we shouldn't be wasting all of that. And I always remember, you know, at one point I, I, I started playing drums later in life and I really wanted to be a professional drummer and I went down, I studied with a jazz drummer for a year, went down to New York while I was still in college and uh, found a professor that liked me and he let me do my senior thesis while I was living in New York. Um, and I, I did a, a, a senior thesis on the philosophy of Oriental medicine. And uh, anyway, while I was down there, I heard, I saw and heard the very best of the best jazz drummers in the world and they were just phenomenal, uh, beyond anything I could imagine. And uh, one of them was, uh, Elvin Jones, who played with Johnny Coltrane. If you know jazz at all, he, he had McCoy Tyner with him and Gary Barks. They were like the best pian pianist and, and, and horn player and drummer and bassist that, that existed. They were just phenomenal. I saw them once in a small jazz club down there, and when they played, it was like cascades of beauty just coming all over. It was so, so incredible. And uh, Elvin Jones' brother, his name was Thad Jones, and he, he, he had a big band. <clears throat> and, and somebody interviewed him once and they said, why is your brother such a great drummer? He says, because every time Elton sits down to the drums, he plays them, it's like his last time he was going to play. He gave it his all. See, that's what the Lord's really asking of us. If today you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. I don't know what he's asking of us today. And quite frankly, none of us know if this day is the last day. Even the most Beautiful. See, it's, it, that, that's, there's truth and reality. When you hear things confirmed from different sources, whether it's from the natural, like the guy that's the greatest, a great drummer, maybe the greatest, one of the greatest, 
Mother Mary to the, addressing the people of Medjugorje, the scriptures, Padre Pio, Saint. You know, the, when you hear that reflected and conf, confirmed over and over again, you can start to say, this sounds like it's true, and maybe I should pay attention to this. Um, this is for Saint Bruno of Segni, who lived in the two, 1045 to 1123. What do the 10 lepers stand for if not for the sum total of all sinners? We stand a long way off to while we continue to sin. To, re to be restored to health and cured of the leprosy of sin, we must cry out, Jesus, Master, take pity on us. That cry, however, must not come from our lips, but from our very heart. 